Educators across the country are turning their attention to the recent research and development in programmed learning and are expressing increasing interest in the implications of this new technology. What will be the impact of programmed learning upon our students, upon teacher, the changing role of the teacher, upon educational administration and organization, upon teacher training, and upon educational psychology? In exploring these questions, let's examine briefly some applications. In a number of school systems, certain subjects are being taught by programmed learning methods. For example, here, students in the first grade are learning beginning number concepts from an experimental form of a programmed textbook. This specially trained teacher is observing the students so that she can revise and improve the program on the basis of student performance. By himself and at his own pace, the student looks at materials on a page, responds to it, and goes on to the next page, and actively interacts with the subject material. This boy happens to be working more slowly than the other students. In this classroom, students in the third grade are learning fractions using programmed materials in a teaching machine. This student is about to finish a lesson in less time than it would have taken her with more conventional methods. Algebra, statistics, physics, and foreign languages are other subject areas in which programmed learning is being conducted at secondary schools and universities. Programs in various subjects are or will soon be available for purchase from several commercial publishing organizations. At the Coordinated Education Center of the University of Pittsburgh, we are conducting a study to analyze the impact of programmed learning upon an educational system. Let me present some illustrative considerations. Programmed learning provides careful control and guidance of the conditions of learning. As a consequence, a number of hypotheses can be analyzed. For example, since programmed learning demands constant attention by the student, it is reasonable to expect that the student will develop more careful habits of concentration than he would in a more traditional classroom where the consequences of attention or inattention are not so immediate. A second point is that the motivation of the learner is influenced by the immediate knowledge of her performance and by her successful achievement in the course of learning. The successful act of learning becomes rewarding and motivating in itself. In programmed learning, each student is able to proceed at his own individual and optimal learning rate. This is an obvious advantage in meeting the needs of the individual student. Our early experiences indicate that below average students may attain higher achievement than with conventional methods and that gifted learners will be able to proceed faster and cover more ground than before. The fact that student skills and knowledge can be obtained in a shorter period of time using programmed learning techniques has important implications. Can elementary students complete their standard course objectives and be ready for secondary level objectives earlier? Can high school students be ready for college subjects at an earlier time? The headlines in the recent surge of publicity on teaching machines and programmed learning could lead one to believe that teaching machines will soon replace the human teacher. This certainly is not true. The real question is how the teacher will use programmed learning procedures and how their use might change the role of the teacher. The use of self-tutoring methods by the student can permit the teacher to fulfill many teaching functions which classroom size and traditional teaching may not permit at the present time. The teacher will be able to use discussion techniques more frequently. She will have more time for inspiration and for the encouragement of creativity. Indeed, the possibility of more, more time for these functions that only the teacher can perform 
and indeed needs to perform, can bring a new dignity to the teaching profession. Educators will need to examine the changing role of the teacher.